Flatbush, we got another one. New York City, during the 1970s, it birthed many legends and many legendary stories. Some famous and some infamous, but all have a story. John Hatchet Hatcher is no different. Like most stories, John's story is a story of a tight-knit family who was just trying to raise a family in the Vanderveer section of Brooklyn. John was raised there to late elementary school, early middle school, where he left and went to the 90s section in Brooklyn. Here in the 90s, he ran with a small crew. He committed pickpockets, larcenies, burglaries. John, like most kids at that time, was just trying to get a little change in his pocket and just trying to survive the times. At this time, also in the 90s, it was all about the crews. You had the Wilmore Boys, the Puma Boys, the RRCs, you had the Vines, you had the Junior Vines. This was an area known for its crews and known for having to have a heavy hand. The Wilmore Boys were known for being super fly. Suede front jackets, flared leg lee suits. You know, these were 13, 14 year old kids that was walking around with a couple of hundred dollars worth of garments on their back. It was all about your crew. John ran with his crew. He looked out for his crew. He was a family man, so of course he did. The people around him known him as a loving dude. You know, that was a mastermind in many ways. Today we sit down with John Hatchett Jr., Lil' Hatch. He tells us about his father from more of the family side, from the guy that he looked up to, the dad that he knew. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Share a video and enjoy this program. Peace, man. You know what I'm saying? Young Hatchet. His father is Big Hatchet. And if you know about Hatchet, you about to know about Hatchet now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You really about to know about Hatchet. We got his flesh and blood. What's up, man? What's your name, man? I'm um, gonna call you Young Hatchet, but what the name they call you by? Uh, everybody call me Jules. So, just Jules, you know? Mm -hmm. Jules, or if you know me, little Hatchet. Or if you know me, know me, you know what to call me, so. Okay. Yeah. So Little Hatchet, Jules, aka Jules, Jules, aka Little Hatchet. Yeah. Um, we all we all we, we all flap is about, you know, we like to tippy toe through things. Mm -hmm. We don't wanna rush and we like to give people the authentic history mm -hmm. of the streets and of Flatbush. So what part of what part of Brooklyn and part of Flatbush you was residing mm -hmm. in? East Flatbush, the nineties, uh, born in Kings County, you know. 92, baby. 92, baby? Yeah. Okay. What part of the 90s you was in? Uh, Rockaway Parkway. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. All right. Before we get to you now, I want to touch on your pops first. You mm. know what I mean? Because it wouldn't have been you without your pops. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So, your father's name is Hatchet. Mm-hmm. A legendary dude in the streets of the 90s. His name's John. John. John? John. John, okay. John. Thank you. Thank, thank you for correcting me. Yeah. Your father's name is John Hatchet. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you tell me something about your father? That as a as, tell me about your father. Yeah. Not tell me about John, not Hatchet. Alright. Um tell me about him first. That, that you can recollect. Yeah, no, no, nah, yeah. Um those that who knew him and that he loved know like he give you shirt off his back. If if he love you, he rock with you, you know, we he rock with you to the wheels fall off. So it's nothing but love and if he got it, you got it. And all the way down to the line. So that's that's him, you know what I mean? He's always cracking jokes, talking shit, you know what I mean, just real real BK nigga, you know what I mean? Through and through. Like he's the definition of what a BK nigga stands for. You know what I mean? Straight up. Okay. Um, you know, no bullshit, no corners about his paper, you know, no time for games, you know what I mean? If he fuck with you, he gonna fuck with you. If not, he gonna let you know. He ain't, ain't gonna be no, I don't, I don't know if he fuck with me or not. Nah, you gonna know. There's only one way with him. There's only one way. There's only one way. There's only one way. So when y'all was in that house, like like I said, John, when he was in that house, you know, mm -hmm. and he was at home, mm -hmm. like, you know, cooking his fried chicken or making a stew peas or something. Mm hmm watching a football game or something, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What kind of person he was, like, what kind of person he was in the house? 
Because we know, because we heard about him outside the house. Yeah, yeah. So we want to know what kind of person he was in the house. Just like I said, you know, talk shit. <laughs> sun sundown, nigga. If, if he up, you up, type thing. You know what I mean? Fucking study your lessons. You know what I mean? Peace to the gods out there. You okay, know what I mean? You said study your lessons. So your father was a five percenter. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. God body, like which one was it? You God know? body, five percent. Yeah, yeah. So he studied the lessons. Too. Yeah, from when he was a kid. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? So, you know, he made me read. You know so what I mean? About the action, like, did that trickle down to you? Like, you know what I mean, yeah. most people that. Most people, like, you know, when they get the knowledge itself yeah. of, of, of uh, understanding, yeah. they, like, they like to send down and spread the word to other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And since you were his son, yeah. he had you reading the alphabet, the um, what you used to call it back in the days, the um, the, the lessons, that's what yeah. you used to call it? The, yeah. lessons, the yeah. alphabet lessons? Yeah, the I'm lessons, called? yeah. Huh? The jewels. The jewels. Yeah, the jewels. Twelve, 12 jewels. jewels. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm trying to remember. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, twelve jewels. Yeah, yeah. Pardon me if I, if I kill you. Yeah, one twenty. Okay, so, I mean, even though we're talking about the 120, can you break something about the 120 to me, about the album? Uh, like, for people that don't understand. Not right now, not right now. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm not even in that mode. Right so, yeah. No problem, no problem, yeah. no problem. All right, yeah. let's get back to your pops. Let's get back to your pops. Now, Hatchet, when he was outside and the stuff that you heard, um, what was, what was it when you heard stuff about your father when you heard stuff about, how do you feel about that? that like, what you mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, people talking about your father. Like, yo, Hatchet, he he did this. He did that. You know what I mean? It, did it make uh, you feel good? Did it make you feel like, I don't want anybody to know that's my father? You know what I mean? Or, or matter of uh, fact, how old you was when, you was, when when he was outside in the street? How old you was? Shit. Well, he was out. I wasn't even born, really, when he okay. was really... Step 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 until and then he did his when I was born he was doing his cop case mm -hmm. and then when he came home we reconnected for a little bit before he caught his fair case mm -hmm. you know what I mean so you know I caught little you know wits of it but it was more of like all right so this thing I want people to understand it's not something that this was like glorified upon in our family you know what I'm saying so. It's not like, oh, my grandmother, his mother, or my grandfather, his his father, condone him being who y'all know him to be. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was like they was trying to shun me as best as possible from that life. His lifestyle. Right, or right. What he was right, as best as possible. Best you know what I'm saying? I can understand that. And, you know what I mean? They like, want you to follow his footsteps. Yeah, so, like, for me, it wasn't like I was hearing stories from my family. It was more so I would hear stories from niggas in the street that would, like, see me like, yo, you look like your father. I was just upstate or whatever with your father. Whatever. Yeah, you asked about me. Dap me some bread or whatever. It's like, yeah. what kind of stories? Like, not to be in depth, like, when yeah. they bump into you, be like, yo, I mean, you had your little son. Like, yeah. like what they were saying to you, like? Nah, just what I just said, like, yo, you look like your father, you straight, I was, you know, I was just with him, quick stuff, you know, here, here's some money for school, stay out of trouble, mm. quick shit, you know what I mean, and I'd be like, sometimes, depending on how, what type of mood I am, I gave a fuck, sometimes I did, you know? Well, sometimes you didn't give a fuck, like, so that, that, that's what I'm trying to get to, like, yeah. like, you know what I mean, you hearing about your father, and you growing up and, you know, people coming up to you, like, saluting you. What I'm saying, I didn't give a fuck was because he wasn't, he's too busy in the streets to be a full-time dad. Mm. And that's what I'm trying to get people to understand when it comes to being a parent, because I have kids. So when it comes to being a parent and being in the streets, you got to you gotta do, you got to choose one. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or is your is life or death, literally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He used to say, yo, we ain't never gonna be the Cosby's. Mm -hmm. I used to get mad, I, mean, I used to hate that shit. So after he used to tell you, like, you would, you would never be the Cosby's? Cosby's, and he was just saying that just, hey, to, say, just to say, like, he can't afford to be, like, coming home, like, he's doing what he's doing in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, especially in his t day of time, you know, so that's he was just trying to keep y'all safe. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Trying to keep y'all safe. Yeah, he's he doing the best way he possibly could. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like, I and I say this, you know, 
there's a lot of kids who have similar backgrounds to me who don't even know who their father is or their father will mess with them or whatever the case may be. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, I had the pleasure of really having a real relationship with my father, regardless if it was up or down, as father and son stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, and that's what I'm speaking to. There's the adults right now that are in the streets that have kids. You know what I mean? Right now, especially the young, you may not think it's like, oh, it's nothing, worry about it. But they're going to remember everything. You know what I'm saying? And they going to, it may not affect them now, but as they get older and you try to tell them something when they're 16, 17 years old, they're not going to listen to you. You know? And uh, you're going to be just repeating the same, same cycle and stuff. Right. That's a fact. You heard? That's so, a fact. Yeah. So that, that's, that's really good and wise of you and your family to like steer you away from certain things yeah. and to make you open your eyes even though as a young kid you might still want to adventure and do certain things yeah you know what I mean yeah you, you had fault. somebody you had somebody that was in trouble right. which is your father right behind the walls or whatever he was doing yeah and so it made you think a little bit better yeah I mean it was always that? it was always I mean, I, I lost my mother when I was two. You know what I mean? He was locked up too, so. Let's talk about that. Let's yeah, talk about that. Let's so I always about, had that. that. I always had that. It was like, that's what I'm trying to say. The streets was never looked at as glorified to me as it's now. Like, the way it's glorified now is weird to me. Because I grew up being in the streets was like embarrassing. No matter how good you doing or big of a name, like, my my generation being in the streets was embarrassing. You know what I mean? I had friends who followed us in incarcerated too, and I remember, you know, them coming to school. We used to come to school, all of us. You know, our followers was incarcerated, and sometimes we'd be crying. So you know, you you a kid, eleven, twelve, thirteen years old, and you trying to learn how to be a man. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you miss your father, you know what I'm saying? And that's deep what you just said. Yeah, that's deep. yeah, but that's stuff. Nah, they don't talk about that, though. Right, right. And I, they don't I, talk I about say that. that's deep for a person just to yeah. talk about that. Yeah. I want mean, you to talk about that. Like, yeah. talk about that right Yeah, they don't, they don't talk about that as, like, that's real life stuff that, you know, guidance counselors in schools see every day, you know what I mean? Like, so it's all good, and everybody, especially this generation. I'm just speaking from generation, from my generation, this generation. And how everything's affecting. It's all good, you know, everybody's showing what they doing, X, Y, and Z. But, you know, it's really traumatizing the youth. And it's having as you see it now, it's having the effects. You know what I mean? You got guys who used to run the streets, don't even want to run the streets no more because kids too well. Mm, that's true. But we going we gotta you know, I was just having this conversation a while back, you know what I mean? The problem was it was a, it was a, a um, um. Yeah, I lost my train of thought. The problem was it was um, a disconnect between generations. It was a certain, and, and I'm, I really feel it was around my generation because it was a point in time where, oh, hold up, hold up. You say your generation. What is your? Can you name the, the generation you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, because I'll be yeah, I'm about, I'll be like 32 this year, so. Yeah, I guess you say well, I'll be a millennial or whatever. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm a millennial. Babies. Yeah, millennial baby, whatever. But um, the older guys stop letting the younger guys, our generation, come around and teaching us, showing you how to move and keeping certain structures and things going on. You know what you I mean? You think it was that? No, nah, <laughs> niggas, niggas got lazy. Motherfuckers just stop. I'll oh, let them be what it's gonna be. You know what I mean? Okay. And you, like you said, when you got fathers who's not here, and like you now you got movies like Paying Fool and all these other things, American Gangster coming out. You know what I mean? And everybody's going far in the streets, and now you're just hearing stories about your father or your uncles or your cousin. You know what I mean? And gang banging is heavy and stuff now. You know what I mean? You gonna be enticed. I was enticed, mm. you know. So, and that's why I tell the, I also tell the people that's complaining now too. You can't be too mad because we always enticed. 
fact. You know what I mean? But that's the reason why I brought up the, the disconnect. No, I'm glad you brought. That you know what I mean? I'm There's glad no. The way you brought it yeah, up. because even even that. even there was a fear of like, man, yo, ah, uh, yeah, we run rambunctious, but if certain person in certain age will say something, we know I right, chill. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's, it's not. Like that's not like that. That's not like that today. But but like okay, you saying it's not like that, and I I agree with you. It's totally not like that anymore. Mm. But I'm an older dude, and I find time where you try to talk to yeah. your younger youth. Yeah, but it's too late. Even when you try to, not to say it's too late. I'm saying like you try to talk to them, and they're in their mind like I ain't listening to you. Yeah. This is this, this is your generation. Yeah. This is your generation saying that they don't want to listen to us. Right, right. They don't want to hear. Oh man, now y'all niggas washed up. Yeah. But they don't see us. Yeah. Pushing a big bend. Well, that was a, that was that was another thing you know too. What I'm saying? What they I'm, don't see yeah. they don't see something to make them say, "Oh, I respect." That. Yeah, but that's another thing too. Is it's kind of like, all right, when you up and certain niggas, it's kind of like when you up and you don't take care of niggas, and you come back and you messed up. You know what I mean? And then you trying to get game. Niggas don't want to hear that. They ain't got nothing to hear because you when you was up, you weren't. You been giving nothing. Now you trying to give us game. Yeah, but this, okay. The, the, let's look at it like this. I'm up, right? Yeah. But you was you was really young. You wasn't. I didn't notice what you was doing at the time. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm up. I'm not noticing what you're doing in the in right. the playgrounds. You right. know what I'm saying? Because I'm in the arenas. Right. So now, when you step out the playground and when I come towards the arena, now I'm seeing what you're doing. Right now, I'm trying to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, because I wasn't noticing you playing in the playground. I noticed when you came to the arenas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try to you're doing more. You elevated. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, bro, slow down, man. Yeah. You want da da da? Fuck, yeah. I ain't listening to you, man. Yeah. Yo, bro, man, you know this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something gonna happen, like you know what I mean? Yeah. So I understand where you're coming from, but then then it's us now saying to us to ourselves, we 51, 55 something years old, and we try to poly with y'all, and then. Sometimes it might get a little hostile, or mm. or the brother don't want to hear it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't want to put myself bending. I feel like that. I'm bending. I'm bending. Mm. And now when I bend, I'm getting disrespected. Mm. Now what? How I feel? I mean, as a, now you want to retaliate. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. now it comes to a point like you know what? I ain't even fuck with them little niggas. Yeah. Let them little niggas do what the fuck they want to do, cause they ain't trying to listen anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a double edged sword. I get where you're coming from. Yeah. So I understand. I hope you understand where I'm no, coming I from. No, I definitely do. You know what I'm no, saying? No, I definitely do. I so definitely that's do. where I think the yeah. a lot of the disconnect came at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Cause the this the, the the generation didn't want to listen. Not yeah. completely, but they didn't want to listen. No nah, facts. They nah, wanted facts. to be their own man. That they be they, they they looked at us like we we washed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, That's I how y'all started to look at us. We washed no, up niggas. I understand what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. cause we not pushing the bends or, or we ain't got the broly. Cause yeah. we grown men now. Yeah. We, we, we choose to do other things with our money to no. be better. You facts, know what I'm saying? Facts, facts, You don't rather to be flossing to yeah. be better. Yeah. You rather to put in financial wealth to be better. No, facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts, facts. I just wanted to get that point No, out. no, you talking facts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You talking facts. I just want... I look at all point of views, you know what I mean? No, whether no, no, I, whether I whether I agree with the point of view or not, I just always look at a point That's of view. That's a good point right there. Even though you might not agree to it, but yeah. you, you have to. I, oh, yeah, for every everything. I look at everybody's point of view, okay. regardless if I agree with it or not. Nah. Yeah. That's what's up, bro. Yeah. Um, let's talk about yourself right now for a second, you know what I mean? As a kid, you say you growing up. Yeah. And you was growing up in East Flatbush. Yeah. And with all the... Like you say, your pops wasn't coming home as much to be a father the way he was. Yeah. And um, how how did that turn for you? Like I'm saying, did you start to wild out a little bit more? Yeah, it started, but it had nothing to do with him. Okay. Like that's the thing. Like what happened with my moms? You know what I mean? And then with with my father, it was like my family did like this. You know what I mean? It was kind of trying to be protective, that type thing, and um, it was cool. Then I just, as I started getting older, I just, just wanted to, I don't know, be outside. If that makes sense. 
Yeah, sense. yeah, sense. just kind of wanted to jump off the porch. Yeah, 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 yeah. And as I started getting older, um, cause I was just shy. I was kind of shy up until like nine years old. Uh, I don't know if I had something to do with, you know, death of my mother or, well, I don't know. I was just kind of like shy up until like about nine years old. And then, um. See, like you were still a shy kind of dude now. Uh, nah, humble. not say shy, but when say like you know, humble. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm humble. humble. Yeah, I'm humble. Yeah, it's just the more you get to know me, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, just shy dude. But um, I was going back and forth, um, between um Brooklyn and Winston Salem, North Carolina. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm familiar with um, yeah, Winston Salem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going back and forth, type you know to give my um my aunt who I called my mother who raised me and my grandmother it was. Give each other a tight break, you know. Okay. Um, so you spent time down south. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I tell, I tell um, my friends, I'm able to blend in both places. Okay. Yeah. So you got you because you, you spent time down south. Yeah. And, and you lived out here, so you, yeah. You know how it is in both places. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. I get that. I yeah, get that. Yeah. So when you lived down there, what kind of kid you was down there? Were you a were you was those one of those kids? I'm from New York. Fuck, fuck yourself. You went down there on that vibe. Or yeah, you went down first, there, yeah, on, yeah. On cool out, just chill. Yeah, I mean, yeah. At first, I mean, yeah. At first, I was. Um, I want to say at first, yeah, I was, but it wasn't like too raw raw. I was just like, if you ask where I'm from, I'll tell you, you know, they may take it as that, but nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I live down south, yeah, so I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I live yeah. in the A. Shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. I lived in Atlanta for a little bit too. Yeah. Nah, I mean, but so when you was living out there, like you went to school. Yeah, I went to school. I went to school. That's how. That's actually where I finished high school. Okay. Um, so you went to school all in New York till you went. Yeah, about like mi- about like middle school, about like middle school, going into high school. That's when, like I said, I started getting, getting, um, get, smelling myself. As it, <laughs> as the older folks would say. <laughs> yeah, started smelling myself a little bit, and yeah, you know my grandma was getting old, so yeah, I had to ship down south. So what school you went to out here? Like what P S what junior high school, P S school you went to? Um Yeah, I can't even think of the name. I ain't, I ain't been that yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had to skip that question. I can't. <laughs> I did that long. Yeah, yeah. I can't even skip that question. Y'all can't mm-hmm. yeah. Alright, so I mean you lived down south, you came from New York, you went down south. Um, you came back up here or, or you just may go through the south for a little bit? Yeah, I was really once I started because, like, my seventh grade year, it was really my seventh grade year, we made it official. I started just doing the school thing down south. I guess I was able to concentrate more down south as far as school-wise. Okay. Uh, I still was getting in trouble, but I was still able to do, like, get my work done, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? And, um, you able to be focused. Yeah, yeah. And, no um, distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, New York got a lot of distractions. I mean, you said New York got distractions. Yeah. Like you said, the way you was growing up yeah. with your father yeah. and all that. So yeah. you have a lot of distractions. Yeah, shit. so so I, um, so about middle school, we was doing the school thing, and in the summertime, I'd come back up here and just be in the city. Yo, what's up? Yeah, messed up then. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, um, you also said that um, we was talking off here. You also were saying um, you you involved in the um, entertainment business. Yeah, I got in the entertainment business. Um, I started doing well. I always been an entrepreneur since yeah. like I was probably like eight years old. Um, I started like candy business. So, um, kid in school, I seen him have like some Oreos. And kid, another kid wanted to. Uh, this is down south. Huh? This is down south over here. It's up here. It's just in school, whatever. And um, kid, kid wanted the um, quarter, whatever, for the for the for the Oreo. And for some reason, it just stuck in my head like, damn, I can start bringing candy to school and start selling it. So I went over to my mom's and was like, yo, I wanna um, start selling candy. 
and she invested in me. Had a little Nike drawstring bag or whatever, started putting it in there. I was like selling candy from like, that was my thing probably all up until like, I got tired of doing the candy business. <laughs> like, it's probably like eighth grade, eighth, ninth grade, and I started messing with the weed. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you elevated. Yeah, that's when I, that's eighth grade start when I started turning. It started kind of see what's out in the world as I'm trying to be a man. I guess you say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the best way to put it. Trying to be a man. So you went from selling candy to weed. You, you made a step up, a big step up. <laughs> and I didn't wasn't even. And to be selling weed, they that just happened. Just be try to be grow. Uh, we was in the um, we was in the bathroom, and niggas started. This around the town, they started smoking like cigarettes and stuff like that. And one of the niggas was like, "Man, y'all don't smoke no weed though." And I was like, "Man, I could get y'all something." Just lying and shit. And he's like, "Man, where bring that shit next day?" And so I just remember like uh, my older cousin. I ain't gonna say his name, whatever. He had like he used to like leave like little knots of like like rolled up blunts I mean knots and stuff like that just like leave them in a um in a bag and he used to stay in the, uh come stay with us or whatever and I don't know where it was at cause you know me being mischievous so I went and took like two of them out and I brought them to school niggas was, ain't nobody do nothing there cause I was just looking at them and shit like that Nobody bought it. Yeah, 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 weird shit, shit. yeah, weird <laughs> shit, you know, you know, that time, everybody's trying to be, trying to be, starting to, trying to be bad and stuff like that, and then, like, the following week, uh, somebody else was like, y'all heard you got weed, and then I just started little by little selling it. But as time went on, John and his crew formed more crews and more crews, and those crews began to get more money and more money, things turned up. They got real active in the streets. Around 1991, while chilling with the crew, they mistook an undercover cop for a rival. Somebody licked a few shots at the police. Police get grazed. John takes one for the team and does a bid for that. Some would say at this time, this is true John Hatchet fashion. Looking out for the family, family first, holding it down for his team. Fast forward a little bit, John gets out, he stands on business, he does his bid. Everybody gets to moving and shaking, doing what they do. But of course, two seemingly unrelated criminal matters, a body here, credit card scam here, ultimately topples his whole empire. The feds launched an investigation into Hatch. They started buying dime bags over a six, seven month period. Once they had what they needed to have, Caught a couple of weak links in his crew. It ultimately brought him down as well. Now, Special Agent John Gilbride was quoted as saying that John was himself the crack epidemic. And that says a lot about those times, especially in Brooklyn. He had to have a real heavy hand. He was being compared to Fat Cat, Supreme, people like that. Even Nicky Barnes. But just like Nicky Barnes, he didn't do so good. Once Hatch started to confess, his confession happened over six, seven week time where it was some days where they had so much information that they had to process in the feds that they had to tell him to chill and send him back and come back another day because he was just letting it rip, which led to a few of his associates going down, which still caught him a mean bid. It is still a topic of discussion today. Some say he didn't. Some say he just told on himself. And when he told on himself, other people caught strays. Some people say he used his crew to shorten his time so he could spend time with his aging mother. Let us know down in the comments what you think. I'm acting. Uh, just got done doing a movie, Antoine. Yeah, you acting too? Man? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ain't yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, it drops it drops this year. Um matter of fact the premiere is in Atlanta, the twenty fourth. What's the name of the movie again? Antoine. Antoine. Antoine, yeah, yeah. So 
Yeah, so yeah, I, um, we got some things working. We got some things working. The world about to know more. We about to start telling the story about um, my father and our family. Okay. You know. have, oh, so you about to do a biography, a documentary on your father? Um, just the whole package. Okay. Whole package. Can you give us a little taste, or or, or can you give us a taste of of your father's first case? Yeah, um, so this case in particular, I personally think is the, and my father thinks is the case that started the domino effect of just everything going like haywire as far as with our family and stuff, you know what I mean? Um, so, um, it was the gun case, he was shooting at police basically, but he didn't know he was police. He was coming back one night from one of his spots, and uh, I think it was the 73rd or 75th precinct. They got behind him and uh, one of his partners, and uh, you know, I followed them. They did what they what they do, and that's how they ended up catching that catching that case. Not knowing they was undercovers trying to, they was undercovers trying to rob him, but they didn't know they was undercovers. So wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Like I said, we typically do, we typically told you last year, ain't nothing gonna go over my head. Yeah. And behind me would tell you, you know what I mean? So you telling me your father's coming back from one of his busies. Yeah. And he just sees a, a car. Apparently, it gotta be a car. Yeah. To trailer him, or whatever. Yeah. And um, and he was walking. Oh, he was walking. Matter of fact, he get it right. <laughs> he get these notes down right. He was walking, and um. Well, he was. They was. They was walking. They was walking on down on him, but they ended up getting in the car and 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 um, they um like was busting at him, like going out because they crashed. They crashed in front of my mom's my mom's my mom's crib and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Whew. Hey, hold on, hold on. So so now they was trip walking behind him. He got to his car. He got to his car. So right. basically, they was walking yeah. walking behind him. He coming from a spizzy. He walking, walking towards his rich, to his whip. Right. I had just had sped it up in the beginning because I was, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I want to break it down to the people. Yeah. I mean, get into his, get into his whip. Yeah. And now I, when he getting in the whip, apparently when he got to his whip, they had to get to their whip. Yeah. You know what I mean? They couldn't do what they wanted to do. Exactly. If they wanted to do. Exactly. Something. Right. You know what I mean? And you also said that, that they was police and but they was out to rob them. Right, right. So they were corrupted police. Exactly. All right. So... Now you seeing your pops is in the car, they're in their car, and what happened? Yeah, so as they driving, you know, they, you know, busting at them not knowing, because, you know, they on them trying to rob them. Like, they not knowing they police, though. Like, if you think somebody trying to rob you, what you going to do? You know what I mean? And But they end up wrecking, and, you know, he ended up uh, getting caught up for that. Going away for eight, you know. That's eight years he went going away for that bucking up the police and all that? Shit. Mm, that's what's up. <laughs> so he went to trial and all, and all that stuff. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I guess. I, don't, I really, I mean, yeah. 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 You can talk for, you, for your own recollection. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I, mean, I was a baby. Yeah. But, but I also heard that you hit the front page of that too. It made him hit the front page. No, not not of the not of the gun case. That's for the fair case. Okay. Oh, it was another case. Yeah, two cases. Yeah, it was another case. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So it was I mean, from from my recollection, I thought it was just one case. So now he did his eight year bid on that. When he did his eight year bid, he came home. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So now he's he's back home. And like you just said, um, you was down south, if I'm correct. If that's the same. Um, well, that was the Fed case. Well, yeah, that was the Fed case. But yeah, I was, yeah, um, when he came home, I had already started like going back and forth. You know what I mean? And then like when the thing hit the front page, that's like when I really had to go down. When I really went down south. Okay, so what hit the front page? What was on the front page? It was just about you know. Uh, Confessions of you know him confessing to the thirty murders. Hold on, you just took a lot of breath out of me, brother. Yeah. You just took a lot of breath out of me. All right, 
whoa, 30 murders. He confessed it to 30 murders. Yeah. Do you know why your father confessed it to 30 murders? Um, they was gonna give him a needle. Mm -hmm. So he was about to give him the needle. So he just confessed. All right, cool. Yeah. I, 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 I take that out. I wanted to take the needle. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that made him hit the front page of a man confessing to 30 murders. Yeah, a million dollars a week. What do you mean a million dollars a week? A million dollars a week. He was getting paid a million dollars a week? or I'm not He was making a million dollars a week. Oh, he was making a million dollars a week. It's front page newspaper. Well, I'm I'm yeah. asking the son. I mean, no yeah. I, I did my little research, but I, but yeah. I didn't know it was. The he gave money. my mom's two hundred fifty thousand from jail, man, when I was born. Whoa! This is speed. This is rewind this take back, boy. I, I, I guess I'm on a bumpy road right now. Hold up. Your pops had a couple of spizzies doing his one two. So apparently, what you said earlier that he couldn't really be the best father he could be because he was outside doing what he had to do right. to make those million dollars. I was, all right, so that's, that's why I wanted to say, like, like, that's why I was speaking, like, yeah, you can send stuff or whatever, but no kid care about that when you're growing up. You just care about him being here in the physical form. I feel you. You dig what I'm saying? I feel you. So, yeah, he you always provided, me. yeah, yo, yeah. When you're younger, money don't, money don't mean nothing. Money that's don't mean nothing. What, yeah, that's why I'm like, you know what I'm that's why when I'm saying when... Oh, you can just sit on daddy's lap or yeah, that's daddy why I, coming through to play ball with you, whatever, get yeah. ice cream. That's what I mean, I mean, I mean the most. Yeah, that's why when you ask um, how they make me feel, dudes slapping me five or whatever as a kid, you know what I mean? Like, and I say I ain't give a fuck. Like, that's what I meant. Like, I don't care, nigga. That nigga out here. You nigga know what I'm saying? Like, that's how kids feel, though. In that situation, you know what I mean, and that's what parents that are in this, those in that situation have to think about, regardless of. I mean, you you seen it with raising Canaan. Yeah, that's true. You know what I, I'm saying? I, I mean, you know, but you know, I, I'm not saying it's like that, but I'm just that's. No, no, I, I, I get a, what you're saying. Yeah, you know, I mean? but, you know, as a parent, and I know you're a parent now yeah. too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes you feel you gotta do something for your family so there could be a better tomorrow. You know what I mean? Of course, and, yeah. And, and, and it might have, and it might come with not being around your family. Right. Now, it doesn't matter really to me. It doesn't matter if you're doing drugs, hustling, yeah. music, whatever. Yeah. It's something that you, you you put your time into to to get a better situation for your life. And like you said, you might not be around as much. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, as a parent, you know what I mean? Yeah. I get what you're saying, you know what I mean? I get what you're saying, you know, my pops wasn't around, you know what I mean? Because I have my pops. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and and um, and yeah. sit here and act like, you know, like, you know, I have my pops all my life. Yeah. To be honest with you, my pop just died the other day. Uh, God bless you. you know I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, I understood, you know what I mean? And, Thanks for being here. You know, and, and so, I can't feel your pain, yeah. you know what I mean? I can understand your pain to a certain extent. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with my father. Yeah, so I long. mean, it's just, it's just, it's just, um, when you, when you were a kid and you growing up and you want your father, you don't care about nothing. You don't, you don't care no. about, you don't care about nothing. You just want your father. You that's know what I'm saying? So, that's what I'm talking about, like, bro. Okay, I, I, I'm, I, I, speaking, I, I'm, I'm speaking. I'm speaking. I'm speaking for the kids and those alike who understand what I'm talking about. Like, nah, like, all right, cool, but I want my father. You know what I'm saying? That's understandable. I mean, yeah. I, I, I just wanted the people to understand. You know, certain people, a certain level. It's like you know, it goes hand in hand in some, at some cases, at some cases. Mm -hmm. But um, let's get back to you. With, like we were saying, you. I was saying um. Your pops with the you said a million dollars a week mm -hmm. and thirty something bodies he confessed it to. Mm -hmm. Um do you recall or not say recall, you know what I mean, how he was getting that million dollars a week? <laughs> do you recall how he was getting it? Well, so, uh, like what he was really doing? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying, growing up. 
it wasn't like talked about like it was just like all right so when my mother was killed when I was two years old you know what I'm saying um the family like it it changed like the family you know what I'm saying so like that's what we gotta talk about like the streets was like embarrassing you know what I mean like yo you know I was my mother that's like it's like like I don't know if people understand but the 80s and 90s was like crazy time like yeah, I was about to ask you, you know what I mean what year was you, your mother got killed 94 yeah. alright yeah did you ever I mean if you mind me asking if you mind me asking do you, you ever heard what was the reason your mother got killed um yeah um she was just in the drug game she was having a drug game too. Alright. We don't go no further. Yeah. That. We don't go no further. So, um, but your pops is making this money. You know, yeah. Like I said, he, 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 I mean, doing it. What, what we were selling? Weed, coke, crack, I mean. So, I guess everything. Every blood clot thing, right? Every blood clot. Yeah. <laughs> and where he was mostly based at? In New York? The 90s? Mm. Um, some other cities? Um, the nineties, East New York, Bed Star, um, of course, you know, Nantor Saratoga. Um what's the spot of the block? Um, right up here. Uh that was like a that was like a location. One one across from Burger King, one 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 five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the spot right here. Um Costa Ricans is a whole Yeah, yeah, like his story is crazy. You know, we, we kind of, we kind of, kind of speeding through a lot, but because yeah, we got I mean, a long, we can't talk about it too deep because you're doing a documentary. Yeah, it's, it's a long we're gonna story. Sprinkle on it. So, yeah. they, so is it safe to say that your pop, your pops could be compared to Fat Cat and Print? All right, so or any one of the big dogs that was. I don't, I don't like comparing my father because. He was really one of a kind, you know what I'm saying? And when I, like, I'm trying to be, all right, so, it's a lot, it's a lot of, I like that answer, you just said he's one of a kind, it just made me think. It just made me think, that, you know, you're comparing it to Fat Cat and Prime, or any one of these street legends, he's saying, and the paper, you know, they saying that he confessed to 33 and he had, like, he put in his own work, basically. You know what I mean? These guys, they put in their own work. They, 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 um, they send money to them put in their own work, if I'm correct. He, he saved lives. That's all I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> no, y'all got what I'm saying? <laughs> I understand what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I'm I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just say this. Um, my father, he was one of a kind. And... So Every, don't compare him to nobody. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's, you can't. Yeah, he can't. He 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 done a lot of things, and there's a lot of people walking around here in good health because of him. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of people that's not walking around here. That's a good one. Um, so when he caught the Fed case, all right. So you say he confessed it at 33, 33, 33 or 30? 30. 30. He confessed it at 33 murders. 33. So the feds got him, right? Now, how did the feds get him? Did they catch him on a murder or they caught him for something else to make him confess? Um, He got caught up in, really it was a um, scam joint. But um, it just, the the doing more research and stuff like that, the murders and stuff came about too, you know what I mean? And in reality, you know, we'll get more of that when we tell a story, but in reality, my father, as far as, you know, niggas talking about he said this or whatever to get home, whatever the case may be, in reality, it was two niggas trying to put four niggas and a whole family and a dynasty behind just to save two niggas' lives. And my father brought four niggas and saved the whole dynasty. 
and save the 90s. Period. Ooh, damn, I would like you to say that again. Oof, that, did, that one was... No, 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 I heard he said... Woo, that's the... Period. Period. It's really nothing else to say after that. <laughs> it's really nothing else to say after that, but let's solve all the rumors and um, people want to say this and that, this mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. uh, young Hatchet he just ended, cleared it. He just ended in the butt. He cleared it. He cleared that rumor, that thought, that idea, was that around. assumption. He cleared that thought. He ate it. You know what I mean? His father did what he had to do and took, made sure the whole 90s was good because niggas was trying to take down the whole night. That's if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Woo. Yeah. A lot of y'all be, y'all y'all be behind bars and one for my father. Never even thought about that. Is there anyone particular Particular, but you know, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm gonna have to ask you, but is there anyone particular you think that is setting that tone out? You said what? That set that tone out to, to make the people make make that assumption about your father? I mean, shit. I guess it was the papers. I mean, you seen a confession. I mean, that's what. And okay, that's, okay, and I that's, see and what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Because yeah. even when the comments. And that's where I laugh because. They, they're, they're using a, a newspaper article, you know what I'm saying, on, uh, like, the the big caption or whatever, you know what I mean? Confession. Yeah, confession. I'll tell you what you're saying, that they heard the word confession. Yeah. So if he said, if he said that, yeah. then he had to say this then. Yeah, he yeah. He had to do this if he did that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, you know, he got he, everything on the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, because he said, oh, everybody got to do their own time. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's the thing. See, the thing about this legal system, and it's the thing I had to learn, you know, in my dealings when I was running around. You know what I mean? Like, there's street and then there's street smarts. You know what I'm saying? And you have to be street smart to know how to fuck with them, them boys, especially the, the ABCD. You know what I mean? The alphabet, you know what I mean? Yep. And anybody who know my father, you know he has a crazy IQ. Smart. You heard? Finished high school, sixteen. Yeah, there's a lot about my father. People don't know he's a genius. You know what I mean? He chose a gangster life. He didn't have to be a gangster. He chose a gangster life. You know what I mean? My grandfather. Own two record stores in Kenarshi. Way back in the days? Yeah. What's the name of the record stores? Uh, if you can I, think, I think it was like Big John's record store or something like that. I got I got the picture. I got to look at it again. And he, he, closed, he closed that thing like a year after I was born or something like that. What but kind of music was selling, if you know? Everything. Everything. In Kenarshi, too? Yeah, two of them in Kenarshi. Yeah, I can't remember the street the street numbers. I got it written down though. Okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, I just I I just don't want I if we gonna start telling the story, we are gonna start telling the truth, and we just gonna like yeah he did this, but that just wasn't him. You know what I mean? Like say everybody that know him, he's fun to man. What? Love him. You know what I mean? Make sure women had money in their pockets as far as if they had a baby. I just plenty. I bet it'd be plenty of women that watch this that that knew my father back in the day said he he gave him roses, he should give him money, especially if they was pregnant or they had a kid. Like him, I'll take this. Do whatever with it. You know what I'm saying? He's a good man, he had a good heart. Yeah, he took care of his community. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Took care of his community. You know what I'm saying? Took care of everybody around him. And what block your pops represented? What block is that the block again? The nineties. What block? Oh, uh, this is nine five. Nine five. One more. Nine four. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Nine eight. Nine 
Okay. Yeah, that's why you were block shit. The whole, the whole, the yeah, yeah, whole cause you gotta, you gotta, cause you gotta understand, you gotta understand. And let me say this too, cause East New York claim my father, like claim hard, and that's like a thing. And then he's in East New York, like as far as, nah, has from East New York, cause he was really putting so much pain over there and making a lot of bread over East New York. You know what I mean? They claim him like that, but he from he from East, he from the nineties. Tompkins and Green. He was all over. He was all over. Yeah, you know. He was what I mean? a street legend. Yeah, but he. Franklin yeah, Classic. but he, he he started out in Vanderveer. Yeah, so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, man, Jules official. Jules Hatchet. Shout out to We Are Flatbush. Shout out to Haitian Jack. Uncle Haitian Jack. You gonna come home soon? Shout out to Uncle Hami. Shout out to the whole squad. You heard? Walking straight to my crib. They had the boot print in his face. Oh, oh, this is the notorious nine twelve building. Tell you what time it is. Shout out to my boy. Look at Inf, rest in peace. Look at knowledge. Shitty. Born King. Action. Scoots. Well, this is the building. Danny Beats. We do our thing and shit. Getting like 30, 40 a grand a motherfucking day. Yes, 86, 85. Stories like Paul Reagan, 6 7 chasing. Hatch it up the stairs and shit. All I know is Paul Reagan on pursuit had Hatchet by the bootstraps. Hatchet kicked him in the face. Word. Paul Reagan fell down the stairs. Nigga went straight to my crib. Where the fuck is that? I looked at him. I looked good. Paul Reagan got the big Timberland boot face, boot print on his face. Oh, see, I want to kill the motherfucker. This is it. Gonna stay two sides. Have ways to get out. You know what I mean? Kept the store from 84, 85. And then, you know, all folks do what they gotta do from there, you know? DC, Paradise Projects, whatever we go to, you know what I mean? Classic, Tompkins and Green, Cleveland and Atlantic. Yo, we going on for me. You the infamous 912, man, with the hatchet, the yeah. hatchet building. You yeah. got a little hatchet in the building. Yeah, I had to take the frames off. I kind of started feeling my pop's presence in here, you know what I mean? Yes, um, I could just kind of feel him talking, kind of talking shit like, yeah. That's why I used to give it up at, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, like you said, you know the story, you know about 912 Saratoga, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, it's where it's at. I swear. The stories you hear is when they just got, got them M's at, you heard? For sure. This is the building. Yeah, for sure. Yo, thanks for checking out today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button. If this is your vibe, don't forget to subscribe, share, tell a friend. This is We All Flatbush. We got more in store for 2024. Peace.